My name is Thomas Vale, or at least it was. I'm a photographer. I had it all. A wife, Allison, friends, a career. And in one moment, it was all taken away. All because of a single photograph. I have it. They want it. And they will do anything to get the negative. I'm keeping this diary as proof that these events are real. I know they are. They have to be. I've been given this small computer by an enemy from within the ranks of my pursuers. I keep hoping that somewhere inside this device lie the answers to my questions. One entry has surfaced repeatedly. It's an address, 985 East Coolidge Road, nothing else. Nine cities had a Coolidge Road, six of them ran north-south. Of the three remaining, only one had a 985. It was in Eveleth, Minnesota. And I don't know what I expected, but it wasn't what I found. 985 East Coolidge Road turned out to be a nursing home. There never seems to be a rush of people applying to deal hands-on with the problems of the elderly. Perhaps it's too difficult to come face to face with our own fate. In any case, it wasn't too hard to get a job. Is that okay? It's a little warm, I think. Okay. I'll take this down, but I want you to put it back up. If you get cold, I don't want you to catch a chill, okay? He'll find out. Nice boy. Comfort and try. But only the healthy ones here will die. What's up, Rudy? Sure in hell ain't me. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. You might want to take it a little easy on the poetry. It's kind of upsetting to some of your friends. Mary made one, and Judy made two. No one saw, not even you. Then Sylvia was just one more. And soon enough, Pauline is four. What time is it, Pauline? Time for the show? You're not dressed. We have to be on the dance floor in 10 minutes. I love you, sweetheart. And wherever you go, I'll always be with you. Did you shine my shoes? Oh, yes, Tom. Everything is fine. It's just that I... I worry about him sometimes. In his heart, he's still 19. He's doing fine. <laughs> From your mouth to God's ears. Uh, do you... Do you know anything about some patients named Judy? Or Mary? Or Sylvia? No, I, I don't think so. Why? Oh, it's, it's probably nothing. But Rudy seemed to be trying to tell me something about them. Rudy? Well, I'm afraid he's as far gone as Max. No, I, I, I'm i sorry. It doesn't ring a bell. This must be hard on you, spending all your time here. Well, not as hard as it would have been to leave Max here alone. See, he's the only family I have, and we need each other. Oh, it's been that way a very long time. Oh, my. Who's that? Uh, Dr. Shazen, will you excuse me, Tom? Uh, Dr. Shazen? Pauline! Oh, I must talk to you. Well, come inside. Please. Sleep last night. Here, let me help you with 
What are you doing? Where's Pauline? Didn't you hear? Mrs. Gilbert passed away last night. What? How? Are you, are you sure? Yeah. Nurse Whiteford told him about a half hour ago. <laughs> nice boy. Comfort and try. But only the healthy ones here will die. I have work to do. If there's an emergency. I just, uh, I just heard about Pauline Gilbert. Yes, I know. Well, what, what happened? How did she die? She had a coronary. A coronary? She was, in, she was in perfect health. She was 76 years old. She didn't have to be in poor health. After 76 years, her heart just stopped. Happens. Well, yeah, I know. I just... See. I don't know, it just seems so... Unfair. Inexplicable. We're here to make these people comfortable and look after them, Tom. Usually until they pass. Life ends. Is there going to be some kind of service or funeral? I don't think so. Mrs. Gilbert's family has expressed their wishes that all the arrangements be kept private. Or her family? Yes. They picked up the body this morning, and I spoke with them personally. Okay, well, I guess uh, everything's been taken care of, so... I'm sure you have more um, important things to bother yourself with. Pauline had no reported medical condition since she arrived at Shady Meadows. She hadn't had as much as a cold in over three years. Yet four days before she died, she had a complete series of tissue tests run at a place called Advanced Biogenetics Laboratory. Decontamination will take approximately five seconds. You 
You are cleared for level one entry. Thank you for your contribution. We need more tensor bandages and heat pads. Okay. What are you waiting for? They're in the supply room. Hey, come back here. Security breach in section four. Security breach in section four. Seguridad comprometida en la sección cuatro. Seguridad comprometida en la sección cuatro. Sección cuatro. Hello, stop, please. He went there. Section the five is clear. Now checking six and seven. Section five is clear. Now checking six and seven. Section five asegurada. Chequeando seis y siete. Section five asegurada. Chequeando seis y siete. Section rock dot nana chose the truth. Section gold chose the truth. Section rock dot nana chose the truth. Wait, see me. Go. I knew that the trail that led me to advanced biogenetics began at Shady Meadows. To find the answers, I had to return to the source. Hey, Jerry, have you seen Rudy around? For a couple of hours. Last I knew, they uh, took him down to physical therapy. It's a little late for that. I just cleaned the mess, Tom. I don't make it. Rudy? Rudy? Oh, God. Hey, Rudy. Rudy, Rudy. Lies. I know they know. 
Everyone dies. Come on, let's get you back to your room. Good night, Jerry. Good night, Miss Whiteford. was right about one thing. Four women, all apparently in good health, had suddenly died. All had been tissue typed by Advanced Biogenetics Laboratory shortly before their deaths. I can hear them, but I can't see them. Oh, sweetheart, they're right over there. The band leader looks wonderful. He's wearing a black tuxedo. He has a white carnation in his lapel. Yes, that, that's him. I love that song. I know. Beautiful dreamer. Wake unto me, starlight and dewdrops are waiting for thee. Can I just talk to you for a second? It's, it's, it's kind of, it's important. I'd just like to talk to you for a second. Um, listen, I saw you, I saw you talking to Max in there, and, uh, I just, uh, wondered how, how do you know him? Uh, Max is my uncle. I flew in as soon as I heard about my Aunt Pauline's death. Oh. So you were at the funeral? Yes. It was very small. Look, I, I don't want to appear to be prying or anything, but I, I I got to know your aunt just before she died, and 
I don't know, it just, it just seemed so unexpected. Yes, it was. It was very sudden. But I guess she was lucky. Lucky? Yes, to go so suddenly and not hang on like... Well, like Max. Well, Mac, Max is fine. I mean, his mind's not all there, but he's in no pain. He's not suffering. From your mouth to God's ears. You'll have to excuse me now. <laughs> I'm not sure. I, I mean, how can they accomplish something like this? It's just... Like, who are the people that did this? Well, it's an experimental program. And they use very sophisticated equipment and medications. <laughs> to be honest, I'm not exactly sure how it all works, but it seems to be doing the job. <laughs> The whole program is headed by a man named Dr. John Chazen. He's a genius, Tom. A real genius. What do you really know about him? Well, I know what I see. Tom, you're acting like I've done something wrong. Nobody's been hurt. Phony deaths. A non-approved medical procedure. Strict security. Are you listening to yourself? I mean, how can you be sure at the end of the road that you're not going to get hurt? You just don't understand, Tom. What about Max? What about Max? Max still thinks he's in the Starlight Ballroom in 1941. Right. Right, with you as his dance partner. I've devoted most of my life to Max. Even in the past... Four years since... since he's been the way he is. Max has been everything to me. When Dr. Shazen told me that I qualified for his program, that my body chemistry was suitable for the procedure, I... Well, you just decided that that sounded like a fair trade. Youth and beauty for leaving a life and a husband behind? That's not fair, Tom. You're a young man. What could you possibly know about any of this? You have the best years ahead of you. Listen, Pauline. I don't have time to go into the details. Whatever Shazen is up to, it's not what you think. There, there are some people, some dangerous people. And I've been trying to track them down for a while now. Whoever they are, they practically destroyed my life. Now, I have reason to believe that Shazen is connected to them. And if I'm right, I'm... he's not in the business of making people feel good. Stop. Please. Don't take this from me. This is the only thing I have left. You see, Max is going to be happy with or without me. He doesn't even know I'm gone. I deserve this. You deserve better than this. I'm just afraid you don't know what you're getting yourself into. I'm gonna go now. And Tom, please, please do not say anything to anybody about this.
physical therapy staff will be at 1600 hours. Thank you. Encuentro del personal de terapia física a 1600 horas. Gracias. Progress, Pauline. Next step. For most people, you have energy like you never had in your life. Straight through here. Ready. This will be your last treatment. Bone should be solid by now. We're ready for the implant now. Go! Seated. We should have full autonomous control in 15 minutes. Dr. Shazen, Mary Fisher is ready for level four. Be there in five minutes. Carry on. How's Mary doing? Incredibly efficient. Got full control of the implant. Rock solid. She's scoring a high 80 above the median reflex level. Everything's functioning perfectly. Glad she's on our side. She's a dangerous lady. Until we destroy the implant. It'll be a real shame to lose her. Oh, I don't lose any sleep. We sell dreams here. There's always more where she came from. Good work, people. Let's set up a level five simulation in 20. Mary, this is Dr. Shazen. See me in my office, please. Prevent infection. Maybe 
Maggie, that's 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 what they told you. Oh, Tom, why do you think everything is a conspiracy? These people are doctors. They're legitimate doctors. So, Pauline, they are using the implant to control you somehow. Oh, control us? Why would they want to control us, Tom? I, I don't know. I thought maybe you did. Well, I don't. Whatever you're thinking, you're wrong. Pauline, listen to me. They are <gasps> using you. I just overheard Shazen saying they can destroy the implant. Did you know about that? No, Tom, I didn't know that. You know what? I've heard enough. I don't know why you're doing this. I told you. I know what these people are capable of. I just, I'm trying to help you. I don't want your help, Tom. I don't want your help. You know what I want? I want you to leave. Okay. Now. Okay. I need to speak to Dr. Shazen. find what you're looking for? Why is her face here? You may have noticed we have a lot of faces here, most of them very attractive. Who are you? And you're using the implant to control her, too? Well, whoever you are, you seem to know a lot about what goes on here. You know, I, I keep hoping that you people would be more subtle with this, but I suppose if you can't extort cooperation, you can always force-feed it. A rose by any other name. Is that what you call killing an appellate court judge? You are well informed. From what I gather, Mary looks exactly like somebody the judge thinks he knows very well. Well, I wouldn't worry about the judge. He's got three hours longer to live than you have. Right now, he's checking into the St. Regis Hotel, looking forward to a night of bliss. Mary is very good at what she does. 
If it matters to you, the man won't feel a thing. I guess that makes two of you. Who are you? Well, you're the answer, man. You tell me. Shady Meadows. That's right. You were working as an attendant. What did you hope to accomplish? Well, I thought I might find out just who gives the orders around here, who makes the decisions. I decide what happens here. I don't think so. I mean, you may control some of these women, Doctor. But judging from your arrogance, I would say you're strictly middle management. And obviously, whoever controls you doesn't need to use the implant. Take him to modeling. So interested in my work, I thought you might like a personal demonstration. I've discovered a way of breaking down the molecular matrix of human bone tissue. Once that matrix is altered, the bones become somewhat pliable, reaching a consistency of something resembling plasticized putty. The trick is applying just the right amount of alteration. Too little and your bones would snap like so much kindling. Too much and they would liquefy completely. The skeletal structure would disintegrate, taking with it all the major nerves and organs in the process. Who else have you cooked up in here? My wife? My mother and father? Now, I'm interested in knowing how long you think you can get away with this. If I found you, somebody else is bound to. Who are you? One of your failures. You might also want to think about what's going to happen to you when the director discovers you've murdered one of his pet projects. How do you know about the director? And I'm so sick of you bastards. Now I'm tempted not to say anything and just let you throw the switch. How do you know about the director? How are you? Okay. You know, I don't I don't think I got a chance to properly thank you for letting me out of here the other night. No, you didn't, did you? And you know, I don't I don't think it's very good manners when a girl doesn't repay a favor. Just name a place and time. Well, you know where my room is, right? Any time's a good one. out of this place while you still can. Go. Go. Nine one one emergency. Listen, you gotta get some people over to the St. Regis Hotel right away. There's a man there, his name is Jason Harnish. There's a woman with him who's gonna kill him. I'm sorry, sir. Are you reporting a crime in progress? Uh, no. No, I, I don't know. I, it's, I don't think it's happened yet, but it's going to at the St. Regis. Let me connect you with the Sheriff's Department. Please hold. Night 
worth waiting for. I'm glad you found the time to get away. Look, all you gotta do is get some people over there to the St. Regis. I'm telling you, a man is gonna be murdered. Judge Harnish? <laughs> right. You've been watching a little too much TV, pal. What's gotten into you tonight? <laughs> You'd be surprised. You're telling me this man? Dr. John Shazen. He ordered Judge Harnish's execution? Look, the place is called the Advanced Biogenetics Lab. It's just off Highway 18. And this doctor puts hit orders out on prominent citizens. I told you what I know. Well, I've got some protection if that's what you're worried about. Mine's more effective. How do you get into this place? With this, I'm coming in with you. There's somebody I gotta talk to. That's not gonna happen. Hey, I am not gonna negotiate with you people. You people? Any of them. Let's go! Something's wrong. What's that? This garage is always full. Chase is here. That's his car. Access accepted. Pulled up stakes and cleared out. Oh. Jackson, get some people down to the physical therapy room. Where's this guy's office? All units report in on section check. You see anybody come down this way? Just our people. All right, seal the exits. No one. In or out until I say so. Yes, sir. Uh, this way. He's one of ours. Pauline. Pauline. That's a very pretty name, Pauline. Let's go. Hey. Pauline, it's me. It's Tom. Tom. Do you like to dance, Tom? Would you like to dance with me? Do you hear the music? Beautiful dreamer, wake unto thee. Da da da. da. Do you hear it? Do you hear it? <laughs> 